So, good afternoon, fellow immigrants. In 1938, addressing the very nationalist Daughters of the American Revolution, President Franklin Roosevelt greeted them with the salutation, Good afternoon, my fellow immigrants. He said this to remind them all Americans came from somewhere else. I think that on this occasion of the installation of State Senator Ewan Chu, the first Asian elected from Brooklyn to a legislative office. It is appropriate not only to remember that we are all descendants of immigrants, but to celebrate our diversity. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, elected officials and special guests. I'm very honored today to take part in this historic inauguration. Just like Joe said, we're all immigrants here, and this is such a honor and historical event that is going to go down in history. I, um, Irene is the first Asian Americans to be elected, woman, to be elected. Today, the students of PS 176 will be doing the honor guards and pledge of allegiance and lead us in the national anthem. Um, 有請一七六小學的小朋友們上台帶領我們,還有給我們帶領我們唱和歌。
So, PS176 is uh, my alma mater, class of 1963. This is Brady, I will never forget him. The Bogus School. <laughs> anyway, the man who can make it happen to Bogus School, it is my pleasure and high honor to present to you the native son of Brooklyn and the leader of the United States Senate, Senator Chuck Schumer.
Senator, get over here. We're having our Easter pageant. 300 seniors are locked outside the church. The Con Ed man has locked the door. He said we didn't pay the bills. We did pay the bills. We approved. Get over here. So I left the birthday party, got over there, argued with the Con Ed man for a few hours. They opened up the door to the church on a cold March night. And the 300 seniors got to see their senior pageant. But I missed my daughter's fifth birthday party. She's now 32. She reminds me of it. <laughs> So our families put up with us, but they also have our backs. I remember a while back I was talking to a man and I only vaguely recognized him. My wife was pulling on my suit jacket. What are you doing, dear? I said, I'm talking to the man. She said, don't you remember him? He insulted you 15 years ago. <laughs> our families are great for us. It's a great day for them. It's also a great and wonderful day for this Second district, district number 17. This is, a, by the way, I know this district well, one of my favorite bike riding routes is down 13th Avenue to 84th Street. 84th Street has the big hills, so I go up there. You know, I'm not a spandex guy. I'm not going to the Then they go back up 11th Avenue, back home to my house. So I know it well. It's a great district, but it's been, it's been a challenging few years. Challenging few years. Remember, we've had the worst of COVID. Remember those days, the streets were empty, we were all stuck in our houses. You'd hear late at night sirens, ambulance sirens, and you said, I wonder who that could be, I hope it's not someone I know. So it was tough. But I was able as majority, then minority leader, to get lots of money to New York that helped us recuperate. There's still plenty of money there. And knowing that Iwan is in charge, is his state senator, knows that money will go to the people who need it, not just frivolous, not just wasted away, not just sitting there. And so we're so grateful for that. We've got money in the Chips and Science Act to make America the leading chip manufacturer in the world. We're going to need lots of people to be educated, young people, to do what we There's so many things that this district needs, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, to improve our subways. All of these things are needed by the people of this district, hardworking people. People either who just got to the middle class and are struggling to stay there, or people who are trying to get to the middle class. Anyone knows just how to deal with that, those problems that people have. So it's a great day for this great 17th district. And finally, folks, it's a great day for the United States of America. Well, you know, every cold November night, on election night, we gather, go to the polling place. It's cold, you want to get home, put dinner on the table for the children, sit in your favorite chair, watch your favorite TV show, but we wait patiently online, go inside, do our duty, and the next day until recently, everyone abided by the election results. We now have some people in Washington who want to overturn those election results based on the big lie, but we are going to fight for our democracy and keep that democracy. But, let me tell the story, but how do we know we'll succeed? Well, I'd like to conclude by telling a story about Benjamin Franklin, two of my friends of her. Benjamin Franklin was seated outside a coffee house in Philadelphia the day after they wrote the Constitution. The day after they wrote it. And one of the leading matrons of Philadelphia went over to him and said, Dr. Franklin, what have you gentlemen created in there? He right in the back and he said, Madam, we have created a republic if you can keep it. Now, what did he mean by that? What did the scientists tell us if you can keep it? It wasn't what you might think. There were a load of problems with this republic. In those days, you had to be a white, male, Protestant property owner to vote. Who could have voted? Raise your hands. There's somebody. One. Okay. So there were a lot of problems with the republic. But here were the two the founding fathers were most worried about. And these are the antidotes to what those who want to take our democracy away. First, they worried about whether the community would participate 
in this new thing they had created, a democracy. They knew human nature. They knew we were all busy. Busy with our families, busy with our jobs, busy with the ups and downs in life that God visits on every one of us. Would people even bother to participate? And second, they worried about who would run for office. They were worried that the people who would run would put themselves first for money, for power, for ego, and not care about the community. But let's look at this beautiful auditorium here today in the public school. Let's look here. This room is full on a cold Sunday afternoon with so many people who participate in democracy, who participate in school boards, who participate in the community, who participate in groups and churches and synagogues and mosques and religious and other activities, community activities. Oh yes, the people are certainly participating in every different great race, creed, color, everything else. And who have we put in office? Certainly not a scoundrel. Not even someone, how do you say so-so in uh, Mandarin? Mama. Mama. Not someone, Mama, that was easy. <laughs> but one of our very, very best. So folks, if Benjamin Franklin were looking in this room this afternoon, he'd smile. This is the democracy he wanted. You know what would make him smile even more? That we've elected the first Asian American woman in government. That is the democracy we want. So God bless everyone. God bless your family. God bless this district. And God bless the United States of America. I waive consecutive translation. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. I would now like to introduce, we had a son of Brooklyn, now we have a daughter of Brooklyn. Our next, oh, no, 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 <laughs> the district leader, I can't help myself. <laughs> but I always, I always say, Whoever, there the, the, was the, a movie a year ago called A Touch of Class, and Tish James epitomizes A Touch of Class. Ladies and gentlemen, the Attorney General of the State of New York, Tish James. <laughs> I had to be here for Benjamin Franklin once again. <laughs> so, first, um, let us all um, pray for the officer who was critically injured last night in East New York. Let's pray for his recovery. Let's pray for his family. And let us hope that he comes back to a safe and sound. Officers put their lives on the line for all of us each and every day. And what we need to do is come together and pray for them. So please join me in a moment of silence for this young man who simply went out to purchase a car and unfortunately someone tried to rob him. Thank you. Today is a historic day for New Yorkers. Yay! for this community as well, and especially for the vast and diverse communities all throughout the great part of Brooklyn and the state of New York, I might add. Today, we celebrate a humble public servant who represents the best of our communities. So I'm so honored to be here with Iwan Chu, who will be your great new senator. Yeah. Over there, those young people, sits the next governor, senator, attorney general, somewhere over there. I just asked, did you do your homework? Well, the teacher shaking her head, but no one else. I finished very good. In addition to being the first Asian woman elected to the state senate, Iwan is also our first Asian American senator from Brooklyn. Well, but most of 
all, I want to thank Senator Chu and her family, her husband, her daughter Mia, uh, for inviting me to be a part of this special event. And Mia, I know you are so proud of your mom. Um, and yes, I know that. And one day you two are going to grow up and you'll probably be a doctor or a scientist or something phenomenal like that. And we look forward, obviously, to your success as well. Uh, but this is a great day for your mom. Your mom was born and raised in Taiwan, and she came to New York at the tender age of 27 to pursue the American dream. And it's important that all of us understand that we support, applaud, and welcome immigrants. Because this really is, this is a of liberty should be more than just words on a statue. They should, we should give life to those words and welcome people here to the city as well as to, this, um, to our shores. Um, and so the senator, while pursuing her master's degree at Brooklyn College, any graduates from Brooklyn College? Quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit. She fell in love with New York's diversity and everything our city has to offer. And it's only fitting that since uh, then she has paid it forward and continued to work feverishly and tirelessly for all of our communities. Now, I've been in government, I guess, for some time, some would argue, and I know what makes a good public servant. Um, and Senator Chu, you are a wonderful and dedicated advocate, and we thank you for that. And while this might be your first time in office, like me, you spent 10 years laboring for an assembly for a member of the assembly. I know what those days were like. Um, yes, yes, 10 years, 10 hard years, and both she and I have the to prove it. We also, she also served as a reporter um, covering this community for the Chinese newspaper World Journal. Any of you young people want to be a journalist? Raise your hand. A lawyer? Raise your hand. One. Very good. Okay. A doctor? Raise your hand. Any doctors? Okay. One. Any politicians? No.
Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, American New Year. Happy New Year, Chinese New Year. And Lashon Akoma for the Jews. You know, when they asked me to come here, I thought that they were going to serve food, Joe. You made this thing a big uh, event about immigrants and all that. I thought we were going to have either pasta or dim sum. Where? Really? That's it? But I... Oh. A surprise for me or them? Uh, this is a new year, and with a new year today we come together to pray. This is uh, the Chinese New Year, the year of the rabbit. And there's Peter the rabbit over there. <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Even uh, as we pray today, we pray for the newness of a year, but the newness of your coming into uh, the whole idea of what politics is all about. Politics not of the head sometimes, but politics of the heart. And so we pray that you will be a person that has heart, that will remember bringing yourself up from coming from Taiwan and, and being an immigrant, but also coming together with all the people that you have met along the road to be here today. This is a great event. It's a great event for everyone, not just for the Chinese community, but for all of the communities, because you show us that it can be done. We talked about being immigrants, Joe. You said immigrants. Yes, we are a country of immigrants, but we need to be a country of Americans. During 9-11, the greatest thing that happened in all that terrible uh, history of the time that sometimes these young people don't even know about is the fact that we were truly, at that moment, 22 years ago almost, the United States of America. We were together, and that's what we need to be. And I think that you, in a very real way, can accomplish that. And I ask Almighty God to bless you that this will be a time for change. Change of thinking not about the politics of making everybody happy, but the politics of taking care of the people who need it the most, okay? We need change, and change has to come. And you are the person that can lead us to be that people of change. So please, please listen to the call that God gives you today. I'm not a politician, but I'm smart enough to know that we need change. The world is going to, I can't say it, H E double L. But you can make that difference. And we pray today that God will give you all the wherewithal to, to continue the road that you've traveled. You can go bigger and better. And so today is a day for us to celebrate, all of us. But most importantly, it's a day for you to celebrate. And we ask Almighty God to give you that, that grace every single day. And uh, so to make our community a better place, to make our beloved borough of Brooklyn a better place, our city, certainly our state needs to be a better place, and most importantly, the United States of America. Amen. God bless you. And I must apologize, I spoke to um, a beloved new state senator, and I told her I have to run to the hospital to see 
um, that police officer that was shot. I was there last night, very late, and I wanted to go. He's a police officer from our community, the 6 6 precinct, right over here. And uh, so keep him in your prayers. I was so glad that the Attorney General took the time. She's one of the few that remembers police. I want you to do that at the same time, because there's a lot that don't. I got it in, Peter. Thank you, Monsignor, for your inspiring prayers. Our next guest that I'd like to introduce to you and call up on stage is our great community leader, Rabbi Yarukum Selvar, member at Abbasid, to, to give a brief prayer. Thank you, YK, and thank you, Joe. Uh, before I start the prayer, I just want to step out of line for a moment and say that my other half of the Yamaka is I hang around the halls of Albany, as many of you know. And uh, it's nice to see over here colleagues of Senator Chu, uh, Majority Leader Stuart Cousins, Deputy Majority Leader, uh, Janaris, Senator Gernardis, Senator Liu, and I think it's Senator Joanne Simon. So, um, good to see everyone here. I want to also again, as well, my prayers for the police officer, for the great police officer. Um, and my prayers that God should return to his family and to his love. And as I said, um, it's very personal to us because he was not a very specific person. So I'm not going to see. Now for the prayer. Rabban Shalai, the master of the universe, who has blessed us with so much, please, please bestow your blessing on this great assemblage. The inauguration of our new State Senator for the 17th District, the Honorable Ewan Chu. And this is indeed an auspicious occasion, as was mentioned, Senator Chu is the first female Asian American elected to the State Senate, and the first Asian American elected to the Senate for Brooklyn. Senator Chu is the first Asian American for, Senator for Brooklyn, but it was the Senate, no, yes. As was mentioned, Senator's immigrant from Taiwan came to this country with two pieces of luggage, to pursue the American dream. But as was mentioned, I say I don't know, a lot of folks thought my thunder, but it's okay. We're all immigrants, or at least children, grandchildren, great grandchildren of immigrants. My own grandparents came to this country to escape oppression in Europe. Many of my friends are co-religionists. Our children are grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. Many who came to this country all alone, having seen their entire families wiped out by the accursed Nazis, that their evil name to be erased. And I'll venture to say, as was mentioned, all of us, unless some Native Americans, are descendants of immigrants from Europe, Asia, Africa, or elsewhere. The ancestors of African Americans were brought here in chains, but most immigrants, even those that came willingly, suffered the pangs of discrimination and xenophobia upon arriving on these shores. Run through hard work and perseverance, that became part of the American melting pot. Senator Chu personifies that. As a journalist, a legislative staffer, former Senator Peter Abadi, great to see you. A political activist. <laughs> and now an elected official, Senator Chu has achieved great success and prominence. But sadly, discrimination and hate continue. My Orthodox Jewish community, and Asian American communities share an understand bottom, unfortunate bottom, victims of hate. Who can forget during those dark early days of the COVID-19 pandemic back in 2020 how many Asians were viciously attacked on the streets of our city out of pure bigotry. And anti-Semitism continues to rear its ugly head. New York City attacks have doubled in the past year. Hate is a product of ignorance, bigotry, and sadly, even attacks and distortions in the media. Almighty God, let us pray for the day when there is no more hate. For as the prophet Isaiah says, a time when the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the kid will lie with the lamb. So can we pray 
and we see that in your grace as well. So Father in heaven, we beseech you, please grant the Senate you the wisdom, the foresight, and ability to represent all the citizens of the 17th district and to bring positive change to the community. Let us pray for the success of all the citizens of this great district and indeed all the citizens of New York and this entire country. May we all be blessed with happiness and success. And let us say amen. Silver for your inspirational speech. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce our young community leader, Harris Khan, representing the Muslim Americans Society Youth Center. Um, in the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate, on behalf of the Muslim American Youth Society, I'm sorry, Muslim American Society Youth Center, based right here in the district on Bath Avenue, we'd like to invite all of you to visit us. Um, would like to begin this prayer in the name of the most powerful, most powerful. May Allah bring peace and blessings to this community. Allah says to us in the Quran, in the Holy Book, O mankind, verily we created you from male and female, we made you into nations and tribes, so you may know each other. If you look at this crowd from where I stand, you're bound to feel proud of South Brooklyn, you're bound to feel proud of these neighborhoods. It was no accident that generations of immigrants, migrants, and refugees have made these neighborhoods home. It's no accident that migrants continue to come to this country, to this city, to find shelter. The verse in the Quran makes it clear, this is no accident. We were placed here for a reason. We were brought together for a reason. This community has elected the first Asian woman from Brooklyn for a reason. And on this day, let us pray. May Allah protect, bless, and support this community. For those who are here, for those who are coming to these stores, continuing this tradition. May Allah put peace and mercy and compassion between those that have gathered here today. May Allah guide Senator Chu, keep her grounded in her decisions in this office, have her be a strong voice for justice and the path of righteousness, and may she always be a champion with those who are oppressed as she has been in her career. Even when the powers that we distract her, even when it is difficult, may Allah always keep her on that path to stand up for those in need. On behalf of our community, today we're here gathered to pray for our sister, our neighbor, and for the success of her in this office, the success. Our next part of the program is very interesting and very exciting. We have a dance for you. Can anyone guess what kind of dance? I'm going to introduce a dance and musical performance from Mahala, USA, a traditional dance from Uzbekistan called Tanova. And he'll be accompanied by violin. Uh, We're
New York State Deputy Majority Leader, Senator Mike Gennaris. New York State Senator Andrew Gennaris. No stranger to this community, State Senator John Liu. The controller of the City of New York, Brad Landa. Brooklyn's Fighting District Attorney, Eric Gonzalez. The best, the best in New York. Former Councilman Vincent Gentili. Council Member Alexis Avellis. Council Member Justin Brannan. Council Member Councilman Yeager. Judge Saul Stern. Stern. Of course, the highest paid politicians in New York, the district leaders. <laughs> district leader Jackie Painter. <laughs> district leader Nancy Tom. District leader Christopher Cray. District leader Doug Schneider. <laughs> district leader and welcome to the 49th Assembly District, Tori Kelly, the leader of the 49th Assembly. District Leader Mariah Marker. District Leader Lenny Marker. District Leader Mark Hanna. District Leader Jennifer 
Dr. Fauci. Doing this 32 years. Longer than you're alive. I love the voice. Okay. Judge, Judge Rachel Fryer. Assembly members Grace Lee and Joanne Simon. <laughs> District Leader Aaron Oyen. <laughs> Representing Congressman Dan Goldman, John Blasco. <laughs> the Executive Director of the Brooklyn Democratic Party, Emil Spade Millett. Judge Carolyn Cohen. <laughs> Captain Eddie Lou of the 6-2 Precinct. <laughs> and friends from Labor, Mike Bove from the Sanitation Workers. <laughs> Norman Reeson from the United Federation of Teachers. Tony Utano from the Transport Workers Union. We wouldn't be here without Labor. Randy Pierce, President of the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce. Okay, we're moving on. Now, I would like to introduce to you the leader of the New York State Senate, Senator Andrea Stewart Cousins. First of all, I do want to say Happy New Year. I want to say Happy New Year. I also um, want to certainly offer prayers on behalf of the Senator to the officer and the family and we too pray for his recovery. But when I walked in here, I felt nothing but joy. I felt the excitement of an entire community waiting for your new state senator to take her place in our amazing body, bring all of her intellect, bring all of her grace, bring all of the knowledge that she's gotten from being a public servant under, under Peter Abadi four years, and before that, working in the community, being a model for your, your, your daughter, being the support for your husband and family, and look where you are. So let me tell you why I'm here. Because I am excited about her. I am here because even though we're not from Brooklyn, she's still family. So, you know, so, so now she's in a big, big family. And in fact, she is joining a conference of 42 members and she is joining a smaller conference of Asian members led by the senior John Liu. Senior John Liu. <laughs> you're, you're the dean of the, of, of the Asian delegation. But just so you know, out of our 42 members, with all of our incredible diversity, we actually now have five members of Asian roots. But we never had a woman. This is our our first woman Asian senator who will bring amazing things to the state senate, who will bring her heart and her head and everything she's got. We expect so much of her. But I think it's important for you to know that she's history-making in another way. 
in our conference, and when I first joined the Senate, it was mostly male, mostly white male, you can imagine. I'm the first woman leader of a conference uh, in the history of New York State. Great male supporters like my deputy, uh, Senator Janaris, and your other senator, Andrew Bernardis, and so many. But for the first time, this freshman class of senators, I know you're jealous, Joanne, in the, in, in the assembly, but this freshman class, six only women, six new women. Yeah. Only women. First all-female class in the history of the legislature. And I know some men are looking like, why is that important? Because men have always had all-male classes for a very, very long time. And so now we have more diverse voices, different people coming to the table, bringing not only their ideas and their passion, but all of our passions. So we are waiting to have Evelyn take her seat. She's already become a very productive member. She's already chair of the library committee. She's already invested in education. She will bring resources here. And I'm here to tell you that the 17th district has done a great thing by electing her. And that I promise that we will take care of your senator. She's coming to a family with a big heart and we will make sure that the resources you need come back to you. So thank you so much for sending me you in. Thank you. Our next speaker needs no introduction. His 36 years of service to this community is unmatched, unequal, and probably will never be touched uh, by anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, former Assemblyman Peter Abadi. politician 
he ever saw. Well, that's Frank Santo is no longer with us. But I can tell you, Irene works even harder than me, day in and day out in the community. So I'm so proud of you. Uh, just the work you made me a better settlement again. So again, thank you, and make sure this community gets taken care of, and I know you will. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge the presence of Jenny Lowe, representing Governor Hochul. <laughs> Josephine Bedman, the District Manager of Community Board 10, who makes all the politics of the district. And the Italian American Federation, Joe Rizzi. And Judges Quinones and Robles, I apologize, I miss you guys. Thank you for being with us. Our next program is very exciting to us. Today marks the 15th day of the Lunar New Year, which is, which represents, it signifies a circle completed and rounded. We have a performance of Lion Dance from the United Chinese Association of Brooklyn. Woman 我們今天是中國人的元宵節 永遠繼續下去了<笑> 
so we are at the uh, at the hour and time that uh, the reason we're here. So I would like to ask Justice of the Appellate Division, Second Department, the Honorable Lillian Wan. First elected Supreme Court Judge in Brooklyn uh, to be elected to join us at the podium.
two pieces of luggage. And that's all I have. And today, I have so much more. Today, I'm here with my families. I have so many friends, all of you. And the most important thing is, I have a home. I have a Southern Brooklyn community that I want to protect. Today, I really would like to give a special shout out, special thank you for PS176, to our principals, to our, all the faculties and teachers. This is my daughter's uh, first school, but I keep saying this is my school. This is my school. I was very, very happy this morning when I came over. I recognize I still can call their name out, their, their teachers. I still remember the music teacher who just walking in here. <laughs> Ms. Gokens! Thank you! Uh, not sure if you noticed the book I swear It's the Constitution of New York State. And also a book, yes. Dr. Seuss, All the Places You Were Going. Okay. graduation gift. My daughter Mia, she got it when she graduated from the principal. Because all the places you will go. So let me read one short paragraph. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself in the direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. She already heard it a million times, but allow me to share the story with you. Uh, when she was around two and a half, a spring weekend Sunday, I took her to the school playground. She was rolling around in the grass, like the sunshine on her face and a smile. When I look around, it's all ages, the, the, the kids, the senior, the family, they were so happy. It was a beautiful moment and it imprint in my head. And that is the moment I know I need to be involved. Because I want to make sure I can see her smile every day. And I want to make sure all our kids can have the same smile on their faces. So this is the motivation that keeps me going in the past 10 years or more in public service, from being a reporter, a government, a government staff, voluntarily serving in CEC, community board, health care center, everything, all the capacity. All I want is to make sure our family are safe and happy. So, in Chinese, we call it 安居乐业. That literally translates is live in peace and work happily, or that could also mean people live under good government. Today, I'm truly honored to be able to support our Southern Brooklyn family in a bigger capacity. Today, as your state senator, I will continue serving you as what I always did, and just gonna be even more. I will make sure our students have the equal and fair opportunities to access quality education. I will make sure our seniors and family can feel safe in their neighborhood. I will make sure our moms and pop shops won't need to worry about getting another ticket or summon and not getting government support. sure our Southern Brooklyn will get a fair share in government resource and the spotlight we deserve. Being a 
first Asian woman to be elected in the state Senate. It, it's 245 years of history. The responsibility on my shoulder is more than just representing Southern Brooklyn. As an immigrant myself, came to the United States at the age of 27. I relearned the social system, healthcare system, education system, and now government system. Today, I'm proud and proof to all the immigrant families that we can have a dream. And we can dream big. My job is to make sure everyone's voice is heard. My job is to make sure everyone has a seat at the table. And that's why my office speaks seven languages. Mandarin, Cantonese, Urdu, Russian, Hebrew, Arabic, and American Sign Language for our disability community. speaking staff, so please refer to me, please, I'm still hiring, because language capacity is very crucial for immigrant community, and that's my commitment. My job is to make sure our young ones has a platform to grow, and my job is to make sure no matter you're Asian, you're immigrant, or you're a woman, you belong, and you can be a leader. make sure I can continue to make you proud. Now, I would like to take a moment to thank my family. Today, Tommy, he got promoted. He's not the other half. He's the better half. And me, the smile of my heart. Thank you for allowing me to extend my definition of family to all of you. And thank you for your generosity for sharing my family time with all of you. I also would like to thank my Italian father and my political mentor, our forever assignment here. for teaching me so much and making me ready for this day, for all our families. Thank you, Peter. Also, there's a group of people that deserve a special recognition because you sent me up to Albany to work and they are there, work with me. So I would like to ask all of you to give a big round of applause to all my staff who put together Ryan Fortello, Nicole Mann, Samia Ali Ami, and my Albany team, Sanju Ryback and Jerry Woodward. <laughs> they absolutely did a wonderful job today and every day. So I'm truly thankful for having so many colleagues in government join me today. Apologize, I would definitely miss it, but I make sure Joe and YK recognize you all. So thank you so very much. And thank you for so many community leaders, partners, friends who are here to share this special moment with me. Thank you for sending me up to Albany to work for you. I'd like to give a special shout out to our labor union that helped me along the way and we surely will be working together for a better and stronger New York, and many of them are here today with us. Thank you, CWA 1180. Yeah. CDPBA, State DBA, COBA, DEA, CWA, District 1, HTA, 
HTC, Shimmer, Local 20, and many more. Thank you for your support. Thank you everybody for being here with me and share this most memorable moment with me. Uh, we have live snack, we have a photo booth downstairs. So I would like to share some joy and some food, snack, and also take some millions of photos with you. So thank you for coming and I will see you downstairs.